Recording clerk. All right. I will call the uh, special meeting of the Selfridge Board of Health. I'll call the meeting to order. It's Wednesday, May 1st, 2024, 2 p.m. in the Veterans Room. They have a uh, roll call, please, of call to order of members. Roland Larishell. Present. Kevin Splain. Present. Gus Steves. Present. Jasmine Canones. Absolutely. We haven't heard. Um, Gil Provost, Gil Provost says, thank excuse, you. he's away. Excused. Okay. All right. We have the special meeting agenda, which will be review and approve regulations and updates. A is 5.5.6. And it says fees, so I'll entertain a motion to open this. Motion. We have a motion by Mr. Splain, second by Mr. Steves. All right. Uh, there's one thing that I learned by a meeting the other day with Mr. Manager. Some of these things of procedures mm -hmm. and others of regulations and I would like to entertain a discussion on 5.56 that I believe this is under procedure not regulation because the only thing that it pertains to is if you don't pay your fee but that's a con that's a standard thing throughout any fee that somebody owes a ton of salvage. So that's a regulation? So that would be a procedure not a regulation so determining uh, the circumstance well I'll, I'll read it for the Thank you. the sake of it board of health and solid waste agent at the discretion uh, <clears throat> discretion determined whether circumstances exist for a property owner that they should not be required to pay a solid waste fee Starting with that one line, that's already in the opt-out, which is in the next paragraph. Correct, Miss Solid Waste Agent? Correct. So there is already a procedure for opting out, um, and we'll get into another issue after. The second part, Mr. Chairman. Certainly. I'm, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Um, I don't mean to interject. This you may have to keep in. Huh? Because of which part uh, this this language because it allows us then to collect those unpaid. What we're talking about is the opt out procedures and dates really should be a, a, a policy. We have to put the dates. Yeah. yeah. Which is on the five, we five, have five, seven. we have the five five seven, seven. seven. right that list. So you may have dates. to leave this because that allows you to collect the fees. Okay. This 5.56. Do we need that first line? No, probably not. I think if it starts with fees not collected, could just be, we could reverse 5.6 and 5.7. I'll well, keep it for, as written. I just don't want to get trouble in the collector. No, right. I mean, we'd have to keep it in so that this collection, um, I think the question becomes who makes the determination about they exist because you have double language in there. Yeah, That's what I'm saying. You know what I mean? Because sorry. we have, we already have the op. I'm sorry. God, that just scared me. <laughs> <laughs> One less day rolling. <laughs> Fire alarm. <laughs> um, One less board of health member. So if, if, if it's going to be the board that's at their discretion, are they making the determination of who's going to pay and not pay? I well, that's the. That now made us something different, Kevin. That's going to be the uh, the procedure for it. Right. So it's the it it, it it's through the process in the Board of Health Office whether people are going to opt out, or as discussed, the procedure if they have a vacant apartment. Right. Yeah. That that way I double talked about it being a correct policy, a procedure. A procedure. But you need um, do we need language in there? Somebody at their discretion determines whether. Okay. So we keep five point five point six that. Um, fees not collected, the second part, fees not collected shall be subject to all collection remedies that provided for real estate collection, including interest and demand fees. 
Any fee not paid in 30 days from the date of the electronic transmission or emailing of each bill may add a lien to the property and in the following fiscal year's real estate bill. Not in, but in the bill. Like Such items shall remain valid to the extent allowed by law. So we keep that in so that we have the, the checks and balances as who determined and what the process is if, if the fee is not paid. Yeah, and that's a that's a uh, regulation, so we'll keep that as a whole. If I can clarify a question, it mentions here electronic transmission of the bill. People are getting them electronically because I know every, most people get them mail by mail. So what do you mean by that? It says electronic transmission or mailing, mailing so it's going to cover us either way future. because we have to look to the future. What what's going to happen in? 2028, and then we don't have to go back and do this if it turns to electronic because it does. It says or. True, but a lot of people may not get get electronic transmissions. Well, they get it in the mail. In the regular mail. So it's covered. You're covered in both ways. Yeah. Yes, it's covered. Any questions or any discussion <coughs> from the board on five, five six? So just to clarify, so we are getting basically getting rid of that first line. No, we're not going to get rid of anything right now. Because I think it, I think it makes sense to start if fees not collected. Um, anything but, else from the board? That contrary to what this writing is? No. Uh, just to clarify there. for you, uh, the member of these the electronic, they have to choose to get electronic billing. So that would be totally up to the customer about electronic billing. Whether you but it's it. possible even today. Right, but yes. you, you make that choice whether you want electronic right. or mail-in. So oh, okay. it's up to the person. Yes. So that covers us both ways. Okay. Written. Anything from, so nothing from the board, anything from the public? Okay. All right. So I'll take a uh, vote in favor as written from the board. All those in favor? Okay. Unanimous of all those, the three of us. Okay, the next one, 5.57 opt-in, opt-out. There has been some work done on this since it's been written. And I would like to go through this basically line by line. You said seven, I'm sorry. 5.57. Thank you. That agenda item B. Okay, um, the intent of this one was to um, was to capture vacant apartments as well as those that may be unoccupied because the owner goes to Florida for three, four, or five months. So on the first line, any, how do we write that? Any, Any home owner occupied correct. can opt in or Any out. Owner right. It's owner occupied. So that's the change in the first line. Can in opt, opt in or out have 30 days prior to the quarterly billing to do so. Uh, requests needed to be received by the 30th of each month, and the months are listed as February, May, August, and November. Unless that falls on a weekend, then it will require to be on a Friday prior before. Opting in or out can be done on the Southbridge Mass website under opengov.com, period. Any questions on that, writing on that first line? No. The next line is procedure. You can come into the office, they'll help you, you can do it online, blah, blah, blah. So we're not going to include that in a regulation. May I ask a question? Yeah, all of the stuff you just said about open cup is not in this text. Yeah, I don't have yeah, that either. That it was it was in the last meeting, that's but all. it was it is not in this text. Yeah, that's why we deleted it. It's an operation. It. It's a procedure. It's considered as a procedure. I'll go to this one. Oh, he had the wrong one. <laughs> oh, okay. I'll go to this one. We so we're stopping at the Friday before. Yes. Yep. Okay. Okay. That's right. This is the fix. This is mm -hmm. fixed. So this is the part that says owner occupied. On the first 
The first line. The first line, it will be owner-occupied. The intent of the board is not to have, um, to take care of the owner-occupied facilities, not an owner that lives, and it's a total rental property. Right. It's owner-occupied benefit. That's what the intent was. Mm -hmm. Did you ever? No. Okay. Um, questions. I can, you might ask a question. I, can, uh, I, I don't know if I solved it. Yeah, oh, when you say owner occupied, what, what was it? What, what is owner occupied? Owner occupied is. If owner owned. occupied is you live in the dwelling. Yeah. Right. You have an unrented apartment that you haven't rented for years, and you want to go through the process of having, um, not having, to prove that it's non-inhabitable right. and non-rented. Right. You have to be the owner occupied. Mm -hmm not rental property, that it's your two family right. somewhere. Right. Also, you're the owner of the house, you're going to Florida or somewhere during the bad weather for umpteen months. If you're the tenant, it's not your problem. You can only apply for not being required to pay in the process of opting out if you're the owner of that property responsible to pay the bill for those totals. You look confused. Well, it doesn't say that in the text. Well, um, we just changed that first line to any owner-occupied mm -hmm. homeowner. And the owner of an owner-occupied home. The, the owner yes. goes away for three months. Correct. And none, nothing on the property, no tax services are rendered to the property. I mean, no if, if trash services are rendered during that three month period, even if they're tenants this there, is what you're saying. This is what I'm this is If you own a two family, right. you're the owner. And yes. Correct me if I'm wrong by the intent for the board, please. There was, there was things brought at the last public hearing, questions from the audience on if you are a two family and you are the owner but you want to opt out from paying for two units because you go to Florida for five months mm -hmm. it's your unit because you're going to Florida and you're responsible for paying for both units so there's going to be the process where you can opt out while you're going to Florida the owner occupied if your tenant goes to Florida they're not the owner that does not apply Right? Did I try to help make it clear or did I confuse well, you? More? I, I keep coming back to the problem. I, I, can't, I have a hard time differentiating what the difference is between opting out of the payment of your trash services. Why wouldn't I get the same benefit in my real estate taxes? Because the property still exists. As, and you're still as, using as that. Does, you're as, still using that service. Well, but you, but the example you gave me, the tenant is still using the service while I'm away. Because you pay for that one. You not pay for that one unit. Your unit, you wouldn't pay for is the owner occupied unit. Your tenant unit, you still have to. You're still responsible for. Because they're unit. using the service. But what if it's the other way around? What if the tenant goes? This goes to the, the benefit the is the owner. owner. I understand that, but if but it's the proper. So if the owner wants to apply for a tenant being gone six months, they don't it apply. It's being the same thing. They don't apply in the time of salvage. I I can't get over the hurdle that yeah, I, to me, in my in my head it's, it's absolutely no. I just think that the more sometimes life becomes complicated only when you put more nuance and more complications into it. The more You're absolutely no. You, you, in, the worst and I how you plan to police this is beyond me because I know I've had meetings that we attended in the early stages. Everyone was in a fuss as to who was going to do the billing, how we were going to overburden the tax collector, treasurers, um, how this was all going to go down, and now you're talking about being able to. Have, you know, you're going to have to accept applications for abatements. You're going to have to police communities and see if, if somebody really is away, et cetera, et cetera. And, but the overall thing with me is, I, if I, so if I decided to go to Vermont for three months, realistically, I'm not moving, I'm not using the property. I'm not using the property. So I should really receive a rebate on my taxes. I'm not in, in practicing the use and enjoyment of my property located in the town of Selfridge. That to me is, and by the way, good luck finding me. You know, if I'm hiding in a closet somewhere in the process. <laughs> we're fine. Not, not really in well, the Well, here's, you know, the board doesn't have to vote on this. And I have mixed feelings on this, but this was brought it up. This was brought up at the public hearing. And my comment to people that I did not 
I wasn't there, but I listened to it. And my question to people, because people were irate, I'm paying for service I'm not having. Mm -hmm. Your property is still being protected by the fire department, by the police department, answering burglar alarms and so on and so forth. My opinion is when people go to Florida and you go to Vermont for three months, do you shut off the water and have the meter removed? Do you pay the minimum on your electric bill? If I can afford to go to Florida for three, four months, I'm not going to worry about them picking up my trash. I'm going to pay the 115 But it was brought to the board. Um, we can say, no, you're either going to, there's a, do you opt in? Mm -hmm. Show us a collector and you deal with them well, and I be think done. People are objecting. I think people are objecting because this is now an issue. Oh, sure. Oh. This, the party is finally ended and some people do not like to face the fact that the party is ended. You're exactly this right. This is what it is. So now we're, everyone is looking for a loophole and, a, and, and some way of getting under the fence. And suddenly, what shouldn't be a problem? Because I'll tell you what: if, if you can't afford the, if you do, if you, there's only one option to opt out to, in my head. I now have to find another private carrier. I'm going to take the private carrier's quote and I'm going to compare it to the town selfish quote. It's going to be math, and I'm going to make a decision whether I'm making my decision sitting sipping out of a, a drink with an umbrella in it in Florida or I'm sitting here. <laughs> so I, I'm going to make that decision, and it's very simple sure. to me. And I don't. Can we put a sixth member on the board? <laughs> I, in fact, I think we've had this conversation before. Yes. It would be interesting to see what are the Parker Hollows doing, right? If I sign a contract with X company, are they going to give me an abatement if I decide to go to Florida? I signed that contract for a year and they said I have to pay a quarter. Are they giving me an abatement saying I don't have to pay for the trash? I would like to know because I think the contract is to pay. One is? Everything's more expensive is than free. Oh, yeah. no, Everything's you're, more expensive uh, than free, and that's suddenly that's we're not sure. free anymore. Well, that's for sure. And, and if well, you don't yeah. be in the taxes, if the taxes well, are too high, you move. Off. You go somewhere. I mean, it's this is basic. I agree. We've been spoiled, oh, yeah. and I'm paying the bill like anybody else. Oh yeah, so are we. Um, sure. This right here is. Correct me if I'm wrong. The previous verbiage in it was opt-in but we didn't have the verbiage to opt out. Correct. So this 5.57, as I read, is the owner, which is a responsible party, opts out, because we didn't have it right. So that's where they turn around and they want to opt out. They have to go in, they have to haul it, they have proof of a contract that, from a hauler. We go pick up the trash buckets and you don't get a bill. Opt out, done. Have a nice day. The short-term opt-out is a different issue. Yes, that's what this is. And, well, all this says is that it depends when you opt out. You don't want a bill, you've got to opt out before the bills go up. Right, yeah, yeah. That's basically what it mm -hmm. says, your quarterly bills, and that's why the dates are there. You opt out 30 days prior to the bill, sign your contract, you won't get a bill, it won't be processed. That's basically what that line says in opting out. Right? Mm -hmm. Do I get that? Mm -hmm. Okay. That's the first line of opting out. Mm -hmm. The second line to discuss a problem even before the, what did it call them? The snowbirds. The snowbirds. Yeah. There's a lot of old homes and people have approached the board. Family homes used to be a three family. The family has passed on and they haven't rented it. And the, the, the apartments are unrentable and they mm -hmm. haven't rented it for the last 50 years. My parents' house was one of them that we use it as a single family for 100 years, but it's assessed at a two family. Mm -hmm. How is that addressed? Okay. Um, homeowners with vacant units may opt out if the home is owner-occupied. We require sufficient proof, and it just lists the current utility bill, water bill, driver's license, everything that you are a homeowner, which is easy enough. Each unit must be vacant for at least the quarter. You must, approved, you must be approved before the 30th of each month, that's that billing cycle, February, May, August, November. The units will be required to have an inspection 
by the approved inspector from the town of Southbridge, followed by periodic spot checks. If it is an uninhabitable apartment and there's proof in it, that three family could now be for trash as a two family. Is that um, policeable? No. no. Is, is my bill going to go up next year because you have to pay a guy to go knock on everyone's door to make sure Aunt June is really living with you and not in the separate apartment next year? The bill's all based on... You know what I'm saying. Yeah. Um, Policing is a problem. Gotcha. A couple of suggestions that kind of tie into this. Go well, first of all, um, one line here where it says opt out. This is really, we need to use different phrasing for this section because opting out is getting out of the system entirely. This is opting in and out. It's clear, we need to clarify that that opt out, if we use that phrasing, is opt out for that specific unit, not the entire property. Because that no, no, this is not property. the entire property. I know, but that's not what that says. Opt out previous in other, in other circumstances is, is the entire property. We need to be clear on that. This, this paragraph, opt in or out, that can be the entire property. When you look at the last that's, thing that's I why just... why can't use the same phrasing as opt out. Um, what I'm suggesting is the following. Um, it was into, this, this really ties, that, what we're talking about here is really an abatement process of, of allowing somebody to not pay the bill for a while. Um, and what I, what I would like to suggest is something like this. Um, we're talking about owner occupied and stuff, so I, would, I think it, we, we phrase it like this. Abatement shall be available for owner occupied properties under the following conditions. And it will tie into what we were talking about at the last meeting. One is financial hardship. Documentation of income, and I said a, a list of why, what qualifies as documentation. And then the second one is permanent lack of tenants and units. Certification that the assessors have legally changed the house's use classification to a smaller number of units. Uh, regardless of what zone it's in. In, the, in this case, I have the no idea what you're talking about because if they declassified it because of units yeah. and assessors say it's no longer a three family, it's a two family, mm -hmm. it doesn't apply because that's what the tax bill is going to go out as a two family. It all comes from the assessor's office. Well, that, but that, the point is, though, is that there will be people who, because some of the issues we're seeing today are people that are assessed as, say, three families, but they're saying they've never rented the top floor for, you know, 20 years now. That's what still I just. Assessed as three families. That's what I just read. That's not. I, put that, I didn't read it that way because that's not. That's, that's what I just read about, about having the inspection. Assessment. Yeah, the inspector inspection is one thing. That's that's cited. It's actually, either it's actually usable or not. And I have I have refer that in here too. Each unit, or yeah. units, must be vacant for at least the quarter. Mm -hmm. I haven't used that unit for thirty years, because we bill in a quarter. It will yeah, be inspected that. by the quarter. I get that. You must be approved before the 30th of each month to be for the bill section. And you're required to have an inspection. And that will follow under the process set forth by the Board of Health of how you get that inspection. Um, but you could follow up by periodical spot checks to make sure that it remains vacant. It's... I don't understand. Every quarter you have to submit approval to that it's no longer, it's still not a three family. Every quarter you have to make a bid to uh, for that benefit. No, every quarter, and there's a procedure. There, there was a procedure discussed. You're billed on every quarter. Right. So to keep people honest, they will there will be an appointment made, and inspector will go and make sure that it's still vacant before the next quarter. And there are people. That's not a little burdensome for the person who has to do it. Like not, not really, because there are three inspectors that have been hired to go around and look at properties um, for trash and compliance and so on and so forth that are on the job now. Um, right now, they're pretty busy. And correct me if I'm wrong, because we have we're re regaining the containers that people opt out. But once these are all figured by what another month and a half. Mm -hmm. Now it's going to be focused on their job about compliance. Is there trash in the yard? Is the barrels overflowed? Are those apartments still vacant? These are all going to be within the 
inspection for compliance to the regulations. But the less compliances you give them, the less people you need, and maybe you only need two inspectors. They were, I don't think so, because here's the problem. Here's the problem, with, or here's the reality with the inspectors. They're all part-time. They work different shifts. They're all less, I think, 215 hours a week, 119 hours a week. They're all part-time, so they don't get benefits. And they're staggered hours, so that one inspector at a time is out in the road. I'm not advocating that anyone lose their job. I'm simply making the point that the more exceptions you find, the more inspections and clarifications and babysitting you need, and that seems to me to be a big problem. I don't particularly disagree with you, yeah. because as far as I'm concerned, I don't have this option. I have a single family. Yeah, that's right. You either go by our rules or go get a private home. That's that close. would be that's the way the I would option. like to see. There's but the problem option. is the board can vote no, because there was a public hearing. Mm -hmm. Citizens got up and said, I have vacant apartments. Help me. Mm -hmm. Citizens got up and said, because we've been spoiled. I go to Florida for six months. I'm not using the service. Mm -hmm. By rights, we're working for the citizens and as citizens. We have to entertain that thought process. Mm -hmm. Doesn't mean we're going to vote for it. And personally, I like to make it simple because if you can't afford the house, sell it. I have to pay my bills. Well, the classification thing, you're going to get fought, fought to the nail because, if you, to be honest, it, to, the cleanest way to do it is to make people classify their homes. None of this, you have to inspect it every 30 days to see it's not a three-family. Force the classification of the home as a single-family home. I don't want to do that because when I go to resell, I'll get more if I sell it as a three-family. Well, there you go. You can't have everything. This and we don't, we don't we don't classify it. Like it's well, all in the assessment. Exactly. They, have they have to would have to do it. That's why I said that. That's why I said Council McKetty. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I don't have a problem with if somebody has a vacant unit that they are able to opt out of just that unit. That's what this is. That's the I don't have a problem with that because this is a user fee. This is not property taxes. And according to state law, user fee, if a, a resident is not using something, they don't have to pay for it. Snowbirds, that's a different issue. I never brought that up. As far as I'm no, concerned. You didn't. As far as I'm concerned, they should not be allowed to opt out. And if somebody says, well, do I get a tax break if I go to, to Florida for three months? No. <laughs> no, you don't no. get a tax break, and you shouldn't get uh, this fee no. taken away because, mm -hmm. because you've gone to Florida for three months. But it's different when you have a vacant property, a vacant unit, and no one's using it. It is a user fee. So thank you. Mr. Yeah. Yeah. Chair, through you, I agree with Councilman Marchetti as far as the snowbird. Mm -hmm. I don't think that should be included in this. Um, I think the vacant property thing, we, we were kind of more leaning towards them. how I took at the last meeting was properties that were someone owns a three family and the apartment's been vacant for yeah. 20 and years. That, yeah. Yeah. As far as the Snowboard thing. Uh, I have my opinions on that. I don't agree with they don't give them a discount. I mean, if you own a house in Southbridge and you go to Florida for three months, I think you can afford a hundred fifteen dollar bill on your trash. I mean, we're trying to help. I I just I if this what we're voting on now five five seven includes that quote unquote snowboard policy, I gotta vote no on that. I'd like to remove that. If that includes that snowbird, I'd like to remove that from that. I think the snowbirds is a, a totally whole new ball game, a whole new okay. thing to the vote on separately. The snowbird should be a separate a item. A separate item, yes. not I agree. And yeah. from our discussion, taken. we were not discussing this within 557. Right. Correct me if I'm wrong, Maritza. This was for the family owned. And the intent was a family-owned, old property, like the entire length of Henry Street, yeah, yeah. that was all family-owned. And Nana is the only one there, or whoever the owner is, and the top two floors have been vacant since the family passed on. Yeah. It's not occupied. It hasn't been occupied. It's inspected to show, yeah. and there will be a check sheet. Yeah. So if you've got couches, you've got TVs, you've got bedding, 
you've got dishes in the cabinet that does not comply because when the kid comes home from college they can live in that apartment mm -hmm. we right. have to be responsible to all the taxpayers all because of the people that like to cheat mm -hmm. so there will be a, a a process with a check sheet that if this if it's unlivable and that's why it's done and inspected per quarter because we built per quarter yeah. so it's the use like like you had said the use i do have one more question if you don't mind. Mm -hmm. I, I don't understand what the big deal is. I'm not saying that it's tough or easy or whatever. I'm, all I'm asking is, why is it so difficult for somebody to be able to opt out anytime they want? I've heard everybody say, well, it'd be too much work for someone to do that. But I've heard no one come to these meetings and say, this is why it would be too much work to let somebody opt out or opt in anytime that they want to. I don't understand it. The process is simple, okay. but in order for this one person only three family that only has one apartment rented to opt out, they have to opt out on everything. So a way to solve this, to make it simple, because like you say, if two apartments are unused, it's a user fee. Okay, opt out from the town of Southbridge and then hire a private to set one dump survey. I'm just wondering why if they couldn't opt out any time they want. Can I answer that? Go ahead. Because can, you have a yeah. quarterly bill and then you have to issue a bait. Yeah, right. So why because it's just too much because then you have to, it, no. Okay, yeah. I, I believe no, you. No, I'd like somebody no, I, I, no, because you've already issued the bill. So it's almost like a tax bill. Yeah. It, this is a bill. So we commit that bill from just like a, a real estate tax, any other water sewer user fee, we have that commitment, Correct. right? Right. So then we'd have to prorate right. it and all that. Okay. So it's easier to say, look, you, these are the opt-out periods. I, I agree with the opt-out periods. Look, you want to opt out, you pay that 115 for a quarter. You know, we'll allow you to opt out the next quarter. You pay your bill, next quarter, go whoever you want. Right. That's fine. Okay. We don't have a problem. And you're not going to get a cheaper rate if you just want to go that. Yeah, I, I think it's your option. You know, I yeah. keep going back to this winter policy. Uh -huh. Very simple. Huh? I said, oh. No, just the language. <laughs> it's very simple. And the form. Here's the abatement. Private hauler. You want to opt out? Private hauler. Provide your contract. Provide your information. Done. Done. Abatement for unoccupied and a multi-unit dwelling, right? Mm -hmm. Here you go. Prove you have an un... And I like your thing. An inspection. There's no furniture. There's no... That's it. Other than that... Done. Done. Yeah. Because That's if funny. you don't want to participate in our program... Thank you very much. Have a nice day. Go to what you want. And by the right. way, let us know if yep. you find one cheaper right. because and maybe the tunnel right. contract. And then, right. and then the right. enforcement is, just like Maritza and her team has done, that everybody's done and worked together. Okay, you opt out. We're going to get your toter. Correct. We're getting your, your selfish toter, your selfish recycling. You're not getting picked up. Right. That's it. Done. Done. As, right? opposed, as opposed to doing opt outs for quarters and stuff like that. You're just either in or out. No, that no, no, is. No, no, no. You can you, opt out the next quarter. Yeah. Right. That's fine. But we're picking up your totals. There's no totals. We're not picking you up. Yeah. Correct. If you have a vacant lot or you have a vacant apartment and it's a two family, yeah. you better have had the abatement, you know, owner occupied two family. We're going to allow you to opt out. It's a two family, three family. We'll bill you for the one unit, mm -hmm. but we're going to do spot checks with the inspectors. Yeah. It's only one unit, one oh, total. Container. Otherwise, mm -hmm. it's a two hundred and fifty dollar fine. Thank you very much. We put that in a revolving account, and and do those inspection fees, and then we pay inspectors out of it. And that it should be very yeah. simple. That's, very very that's what we're trying to do with that. That's what we're trying to do with you know, that. Yep. This it, does not apply to the snowboard. Because, right, because this this thing. That's, that's it. it. You're done. This is why it said per unit. You want to go to Florida? Well, then pay the one fifteen for the. You know something? I'm sorry. <laughs> I mean, my. I'm a taxpayer here, so I. I mean, I. Have yes. Yes. Paying, paying, paying nothing in Florida for their trash bags. <laughs> well, listen. I listen to. I Mr. They're paying bills there too. Rick, Rick Clements, who owns a property in Marshfield, yeah. right? Uninhabitable, nothing, right? He's still required to pay that fee, and provide documentation that he's getting his trash picked up from somewhere. <laughs> Rick Clements makes a lot more money. Than but, no, Council my Kenny, with all due respect, yes, it doesn't matter on income levels. It's sure. the policy. Correct. It's the policy. They say, this is our policy, that's it. 
you know? And I, I respect people and I understand people have incomes, but if you don't want to participate in the program and you have a four family home, right? You either do it our way or go to somebody else. Amen. We want you to come to us because we have the cheapest rate. Correct. But if you choose to go to somebody else, that's your choice. Go. It's, we can't have all these ladies. We don't have enough staff. Okay. This operation here is an $84 million operation. We don't have the staff to do it. Correct. You want but a tailored plan, you go to a private holler. You want it tailored to you, get a private holler. Right. You well, go to Snowbirds and they can do it? Yeah. Right. This article has nothing to do with Snowbirds. No. This tried to refer to if you are the owner right. and you have a vacant unit. Right. Just exactly That's what we're it. talking. Mm -hmm. That's all we're talking on this article. And uh, because we have not even drawn up anything about the snowbirds for the board to say no to. Right. Because, you know, if you got that four family, <coughs> you also have three units of tax deduction that single family people don't have tax deductions. That's true, too. That's yeah. right. And there's, so, many, and there's many tenants that already, have, or landlords, that have raised their rent yep. mm -hmm. to yep. accommodate for our fee. Yep. So let me tell you, even if they have a three family, because I know somebody that has done this to a family member of mine, has a three family got their trash bill off their rent to accommodate monthly. And they're probably not even living in that three family, are they? No, they're not. Exactly. All right. So they up the rent $75 per month. But this is owner occupied. No, but what I'm this, is, this is only for the owner benefit. Well, they own it. They're down in the Cape because they have a summer place down in the Cape. They live there all the way around. They yep. rent out the three family, but they're only renting out the first family. This would not they apply to them. No, no, but what I'm right. saying is they're not, they're not renting the other two floors, but they raised the rent to accommodate. Of course they did. Of course they did. Yeah. That, that bill. People will accommodate the rent. Now, listen, most of those, a lot of residents, where they have uh, additional uh, resources from whatever agency they get, mm -hmm. they, they're paying it. They're up in the rent. These rents in town everywhere are $1,900. Mm -hmm. Yes. Oh, yeah. Come on. I mean, mm -hmm. well, I mean tax, with the taxes they, they pay money. and all that, if you're telling that, me. That is part of the problem. The, the catch is the, the single property, of, like one family owners who really are on the edge of poverty. You know something so that else? Was some, some of the people that came up to the last I'm a single family. I, I own a single family. Yeah, so okay? I, I really get aggravated when people cry me a river about poor single family owners. Because if I can't afford my single family, I am going to sell it and I'm going to downsize. Mm -hmm. Because I am on fixed income, I'm retired, and I work part time, and mm -hmm. my wife works. Yeah. We both bust our butt. Okay? These multifamily units. Are a business. I'm not disagreeing with that. I don't I get totally a tax break. Totally okay? So and there's a process out there in the government for poverty people. Mm -hmm. Okay? Um, there's all this help out there. The problem is if, if, you're, if you're a poor homeowner, you can't get help. You get it if you're a renter. Are we on an opt in, opt out? Yeah. This is opt in, opt out. There's something there for, for people who own My, my only follow up to that, had we done an override, they would have been paying this at a lot more rate. Yeah. Yes. And it would not have been. Probably true. Yes. No, it is true. It, it is true. Yeah. A, yes. a two and a half override on the dollar amount that is customers for this program on an average single family home of $305,000 in the town of Suffolk mm -hmm. would have been a $474 yes. increase in the taxes for a year. I disagree. Okay. Well, that's, no, that's a number. Pl plug it into. I disagree on that. Plug it into the GSO Department of Local Services website. They okay. give you the formula. And they'll tell you how much it is. Hey Jack, what, how much? All right, we had a. Hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it. So we got a motion to move the question. Well, two point six million. Two point six million. Yeah. 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 Two point six with any the amended owner language occupied. of any, any would, owner would, occupied. Any owner of an owner occupied house, home. How did you have that first line written? <laughs> any home, owner occupied. Perfect. Can opt in or out. Done. That's my motion. So, I'm sorry, can I say it again? Your motion is to? I made a motion to move the question as written as any home owner occupied. 
So we're going to add the word occupied after owner. No, and I think, I think the phrase that you want is owner of an owner occupied home. I need a second. 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 I need a Roland Larishow? Yes. Kevin Splain? Yes. Gus Steves? Yeah, I guess. Okay. The 558, which I believe is the last two paragraphs. Correct, Maritza? Correct. The last two paragraphs will be stricken. Str okay. Did I say that right? Uh, mm -hmm. Good enough. Um, because when you read the paragraph, it is procedure of how the previously mentioned article is going to be enforced by the inspection. Um, the and the last one is moved the question, but that doesn't mean we voted on the question. We just moved it. We just did. No. Oh, we voted. Oh, I'm sorry. I missed it. Okay. All right, so we're going to take a vote uh, on 557 as amended, owner-occupied. All those in favor? Opposed? Okay, three to zero. Do you understand that, Patty? Mm-hmm. She's got it. Okay, so that takes care of 556, 557. Uh, 558, I would entertain a motion, motion. that we... Um, This says abatement process, but that's already in there, is it not? No, that, we were talking about it last time. That's what that's what this document was. We want to. I will entertain a motion. We don't have that. Five five eight, be stricken by um, vote on no action to this agenda. Because what's written in the last two paragraph is a procedure of how the board will determine that that unit is vacant and how it is such policed or enforced so that's a procedure versus a regulation, regulation because the regulation is in 557 well mr. mr. chairman if i suggest that since we were talking about the basement some of this was in the last meeting that's one of the reasons why uh, i know that the, one of the key issues that was brought up last time was financial hardship and i mentioned this a little while ago um, that's why i was thinking of language here that would specifically specify what the conditions are that we would define financial hardship to be. How we there is nothing. It. Let me stop you right here, Gus. We have an agenda. This is a special meeting. There's nothing on here about financial hardship. It says that that's the abatement process, though. That's what we were talking about last we time. We have nothing in writing. We talked about it, but there has been nothing in writing to come before this board on a special meeting. We're making the agenda for the uh, public hearing because we were required by the financial director on the dates. Mm -hmm. And at the same time, we take care of 556, 557. That will include the dates that the, finan the financial officer required on the billing and the avenue to opt out for um, opting out period because we had nothing in writing to opt out, mm -hmm. even though people that. have been doing it, that, yeah. and um, the vacant apartment. The people that have been calling asking about the financial hardships and the snowbirds and all that, I'm telling them about Thursday, next Thursday's meeting. I said if you want to ask those questions, Thursday's the time to come. At the so, regular meeting. Yeah, so those questions will be coming in on Thursday. So the question is then, are we doing the public hearing to include abatements or not? No. We are going to do the public hearing. <clears throat> if we want to have the public hearing to get this done, yeah. We have to advertise for two weeks. Oh, I know, I know how it works. And it's yes. got to be done today so that we're going to have the proper language, which the only language you changed was 557 related to owner occupied. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, I understand. Okay. That. 
it has to be sent out to be advertised and everything else so we can get that public hearing. Yeah. If we have any other stuff on next month, next week's, it's all the month, meeting, we have to talk about it. We have to have it written properly. Mm -hmm. We have to be, have agreed upon that format and the terminology yeah, before it can be added into that public hearing. And when are we going to have the public hearing? June now? So the other thing that has been going on is that we are going to take this step by step. Do it once. Do it right. Let's not rush it. Get it off the table and move on. There is already an abatement process in the town. Should somebody not do it, just like if you moved out, yeah. you, there's already an abatement process for your water sewer bill, so on and so forth. So if somebody is in between dates and they opt out and they paid for three months and they, they, they have two months left, there's an abatement process already. That's a process. Yeah. But that's what the dates say. Right. That's what the dates that the finance director needed. But it's not in the agenda right now. It's not for that, and we're not ready to go to abatements and have that discussion on giving away everything for free because that's going to be a long one. Okay. Mr. Chairman, at the last meeting I asked about abatements for low-income residents, somebody yeah. 65 years or older. So relevant people did too. And, and they are 100% at the poverty level, federal poverty level or, or less. And you said you would bring it up at the next meeting. So we are at the next meeting. This is a special meeting. We, we were planning on bringing it up at the regular meeting to discuss it because this was already in the queue. Change plenty of agendas on every meeting I've ever been on. Suspend the rules. And some things it. worked and some things didn't. But we really have to discuss this thing. Um, everybody's got a different opinion. You've got senior rebate, which I'm getting off, a little bit off topic, but you've got senior rebate, but we're the cheapest avenue in town. I would benefit from the senior rebate. But where do we stop and how do we enforce it? Well, I would say it's a senior rebate, but they have to be at a certain low income. That's what I would recommend. Yeah, me too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because I'm a senior, I'm a senior too, but I certainly can afford this. I don't need the rebate. But I have plenty of people that I know have been talking to me. They are seniors, and they are also at, at or below the poverty level, and they need some help with this. Can we discuss that on the ninth? Yes, Thursday. I think that's the yep, ninth Thursday. Thursday. Okay, appreciate it. Okay. No that's, problem. That was part of the discussion. I will I make a note that that way, so. for the agenda. On I did the, as well. A lot of the concerns come you have that. Yes. Because we're not ready for that yet. Yes. So I'll, t I'll entertain a motion. I want to I make yes. a motion yes. to remove the okay. abatement process, agenda three. To uh, discuss that further date. Thank you. Go second um, that. I know. You guys wanted to do the five point. You wanted to delete this, the bottom. No, we're, we're, but I got a motion. So we're, we're Xing that? To a further date. Okay. All right. So we're going to do 5.5.8 5. Um, abatement. The abatement's going to go to a different date. Yeah. I believe the last two paragraphs are a procedure on the process of 557, correct? Correct. That does not That does not. Does that have not anything in any remote form have to do with abatement? That was something in there piggybacking off 557, but that does not have to be a regulation. That's the process. Right. Okay. So, so that's I the just only reason it's to stricken. Gus second. second the uh, removal of 558. So okay. unanimous. All. All in favor? Unanimous. Thank you. Okay. If there's no other business on this special meeting. Yes. Oh yeah, that was the, the new agenda. Yeah. We have to set a date for the public hearing. 
for these two items? So I have the council chambers reserved for May 23rd at 6 p.m. Uh, I thought we were going to do May 22nd at 6 p.m. May what? what? The Whatever the third. No, I think it's a Wednesday. We talked, Wait a minute. It was Wednesday the 22nd. Wednesday. Wednesday. Yes, so that's the day. That's the day I reserved it. May, it'll be the 22nd, which is the Wednesday, 6 p.m. Council chambers for the... Uh, Public hearing on these two items. So I have today, May 9th, and May 22nd. May 22nd, okay. And that's enough time to post it. Yeah, I have to yeah, post it by uh, Friday. Okay. Friday. I have until the 7th to post it. Okay, so that's going to be plenty of time to post yeah. it for the 22nd so we get this stuff done and move on. Yeah, that's why yeah. we did it. Okay, case. all in favor of the May 22nd, 6 p.m.? Okay, unanimous. Motion adjourned. Second. All those in favor? Adjourned at <coughs> what's what's Verizon number? Two fifty two.